Hi, my name is AJ Orta. I'm a program development associate here at Think Together. I'm going to be showing you the pinball game unit design, all the supplies that are included, and a finished pinball game unit. So important parts to include. All pinball game designs are going to need a ramp or a ball shooter so the marble will fall down there and to the bottom. Now you notice it's gone down here. These right here are called the flippers. We have tongue depressors as the flippers and they will be in charge and they will hit the ball, marble all the way up the pinball. Uh, you will also need a uh, points for objectives. So you will need the marble to hit certain things and you get points for hitting this objective here, or this target here, or going through this tunnel here, whatever uh, the participants decide. Last but not least, the uh, pinball game will need to be hoisted onto angles. So uh, I just use two cups and it holds uh, really well and you just set that right on there and you have your pretty, a pretty decent angle to which, in which to play. And those are the four parts you'll need to include. <clears throat> so now I will demonstrate uh, how the gameplay works. I have the marble in the cup here, down the ramp, ah, so cool. and now I get points for hitting certain targets and you, you may have to tilt it a little bit and that's fine. Some kids, you know, some of the students may be like, oh, you can't do that, but that's okay. You're going to have to navigate some of it because, for example, this was a ramp and I had to tape this down because the marble wasn't going up the ramp. The ramp was too high. So the students are going to learn, uh, you know, how to uh, troubleshoot some of those uh, issues. Um, oh, that's a good one. Oh, so it's getting stuck in that piece of paper. Should you tape it down? Exactly. So uh, tape is part of the supplies included, and you're more than welcome. To, the students are more than welcome to uh, make adjustments. They will have time to play the game mm -hmm. and then see, okay, what's working it and what's not working before they uh, have uh, other participants try it out. Excellent. Oh, so they're going to have a day where they each mm -hmm. play each other's game? Perfect. What other uh, problems did you come up with when you were making this? Uh, other problems, such as like the ramp, maybe needing to be on this side. Um, I wasn't using this kind of ramp at first. I was using just um, uh, the cup and, and having it right there and just kind of uh, putting it in that way. But the ramp helps give it momentum, um, and then it lands off the angle differently. This helps as well to kind of be a bumper. Is and, that just um, a piece of paper? It's a piece of paper rolled up and just taped right here. Um, a lot of just tape. It's very simple supplies. Um, I like these smaller cups as well because um, it makes the objectives um, throughout the lesson a little bit harder. For example, one of the objectives is the, to roll a marble safely into a cup without it bouncing out. Um, so these smaller cups, kind of, um, they're easier to manipulate and they're, they're, uh, they, I feel like they um, work a little bit better. But either cup size is, is fine. Besides uh, changing that little bridge, what other changes in your design did you make? Uh, other changes, um, this this was originally um, all one piece still, uh, but the marble, it was too thick to where the marble wasn't able to get up through the ramp. So I had to kind of cut it and make just a tunnel. Um, so if you notice there, I cut that and I just taped it right here just along and it holds nicely and the marble will roll on down um, through there and um, have no problems. So how many designs do you think you went through before you settled on this one? Uh, I had to look at a couple different designs. It took me, myself, about 20 minutes to make this on my own, um, but it was difficult. It was challenging, um, and I had to, again, look at the different designs to kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do. So if you had a problem like it wasn't going through the tunnel, how did you solve it? Did you just automatically know that you should split it up, or did you go through multiple versions of that tunnel? Went through uh, different versions. I tried tying the tunnel. If you see these holes right here, I tried tying the tunnel with pipe cleaners mm. um, to kind of make it uh, suspended a little bit, and that didn't work. So yes, there, there is trial and error. You are going to find different things work better. I had to put a cup here so that the marble didn't get stuck in the corner or underneath the ramp. And this oh. also kind of holds the ramp securely here so it doesn't move around too much. Uh, again, also kind of why this uh, bumper back here is helpful um, so that the marble doesn't get stuck in certain spots. What's that made out of? Is that a cup? These are paper cups. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just uh, cut, the, cut the top off this and then just made another, you know, cut down the bottom there. Uh, actually, use the top of this. So you just cut all the way around here. So all of those different bumpers are ways to change the angles of the ball movement? Uh, to change the angles and momentum. So some of these bumpers will uh, make the momentum faster. Mm -hmm. So if a marble, say, hits at the right angle here, mm -hmm. the momentum will send it right back even faster. Um, and then 
certain bumpers will slow things down. So this is kind of meant to slow the marble down um, and get, get it to where you want it. So it just matters like the angle that it's placed Angles, at? Angles, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. that's super cool. What else do we need to know? Let's see. Uh, to be creative, just have fun with it. Um, and, and I would suggest not taping things down right away. Uh -huh. Maybe putting things in spots, kind of holding them and seeing how they look. Um, so that way you're not, you know, wasting tape and then ripping up certain things. So that way it looks nice at the end. So you definitely need teamwork for that. Exactly, Extra hands. a lot of teamwork. And if you notice, the flippers I have down here, I originally had on this side, and mm -hmm. I had the game the other way, but the flippers were too far up. The marble was easily falling down, so I kind of had to put the flippers about an inch, half, inch and a half away from where the bottom's going to be. Oh. If you notice over here, I have it about three inches out, mm -hmm. and it was too much. So another design change. Mm -hmm. A lot of testing and redesigning. Exactly. That's good. What are those pipe cleaners for? Uh, these ones were just to kind of keep the marble from rolling all the way down quickly. So they kind of, if you notice, it kind of holds the marble a little bit. And then I can get a little bit of a... Oh! And That's also, so innovative. It also prevents it, see right there, just resting on there. It's kind of cheating, but I like it. That's um, not cheating. How did you think of that? I thought of that originally because I didn't want the uh, tongue depressors to slide out. So, so that you, stopped so it from coming out. So it stopped out. it from sliding out, and then it had to add a, ben add a benefit of helping make the gameplay more fun. It actually shoots it a lot. Mm -hmm. Further. Ah, nice. So if you look at your final design really closely, you can actually see evidence of all the different design changes you made. Exactly. That's good. I like that. Alrighty, so now that we've seen uh, what the eventual final project of the pinball game unit will look like, uh, now I'll show you what the supplies look like before you've even, before students have even started to design. We need one uh, file box lid, so it looks like this. Um, these may be a little bit harder to get. Um, talk to the office, really uh, uh, look around, but you only need one per group of three to four. Uh, each group is getting the same supplies, so while they're getting the same supplies, all their games are going to look very different, which is interesting. I like that. Uh, also, we're going to have, uh, they're going to be given six pipe cleaners, they're going to be given a roll of tape, scissors, a ruler, eight tongue depressors, Six paper cups, again, I like these smaller ones. I think that they, uh, they work better and they make it a little bit more challenging. One marble. I only, I'm only using one small marble uh, just to keep the variable minimal um, instead of using a large marble or some may ask, can we use three or four? Just give them one marble um, and see how they do with that and then later on it can inspire them to maybe make one at home and use you know, uh, different variables. Um, they're gonna use one paper towel roll. So this is one paper towel roll that I've cut in half and it may not seem like a lot, but this will totally work. Um, they can cut this in half, they can even cut this even further, make bumpers, whatever it may be. But this is perfect for them. Um, so one paper towel roll for each group. They're going to have four pieces of construction paper here, and they can use that to make ramps. I've used, uh, I've made, I've rolled this up to make a bumper. I've, the paper has multiple functions. They'll be using paper in lessons prior, so they'll already have some experience in how to make ramps and how to use the paper to build momentum or for angles. Each group will also be given um, a kind of a template of different game designs just to give them an idea. For me, that was the struggle was uh, getting all these supplies, but then having the vision, I'm a visual learner, and seeing how all these things fit together. But using this template kind of helped. I didn't copy this template, but I used it to inspire me. So that's the important part, is to make sure the students are not copying this, but to inspire them to make their own. They're working in groups, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, another quick pro tip is also to monitor by walking around, manage by walking around. Uh, students are going to be working in groups, so making sure to mediate any disagreements on designs and things like that, and validating everyone's opinion, everyone's thoughts, that they're all valued, but that you know you have to compromise as a team to find a design that works for everybody. And ask those guiding questions. And ask those guiding questions. 